Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Mackenzie, a third grade teacher in California. In today's video, we are going over Google Sheets. So there are so many things as a teacher that we can use Google Sheets for, like grade books or lesson planning, making checklists, keeping track of student data. And so in today's video, I really wanted to walk you through some key things to know to make the most out of using Google Sheets. So to make this even more practical, you can follow along step by step. So by the end of this video, you will have a sheet that's ready to use to track student data using checklists, drop down menus, and you'll know a lot of extra little tips and tricks to make the most out of using all those formatting tools. Now, before we get started, please give this video a thumbs up. That's one of the best ways to support my channel and subscribe if you haven't already. And let's go ahead and jump right into it. To start, you're going to go ahead and open a new Google Sheet by selecting Sheets from your Google Waffle or simply type sheets.new in your address bar. Now, some things to notice is your formatting toolbar across the top here, the menu bar. Right here, we have the columns going across, the rows are going down, and then these are the cells. Down at the bottom here, notice we are on sheet one. If you click the arrow, you can choose to rename it. So for now, I'll change the name to trimester one. So this would be a sheet that will keep track of my class data for the first trimester. Then I could add another sheet for trimester two and trimester three by clicking the plus icon. Now we are going to start by making a class data checklist, which could be used to keep track of student assignments. Let's go ahead and add a title here right at the top. First, I'm going to want to enter all of my students' names. Now I'm going to add a title to the sidebar in column A for my checklist. So I'm going to be starting in column B for the student names and then just enter all of their names into that column. Notice some of the names are cut off. To change the size of the column, I can click and drag the cell or simply double click and it will resize so no text is cut off. Across the top here, I'm going to enter the titles of each column. For now, I'm going to write them as different assignments. So this would work as an assignment checklist. So I will input assignment one to assignment 10. So a little trick is Google Sheets will pick up a pattern and so if I put assignment one and then assignment two, it will automatically pick up that the pattern is assignment and then numerical order. So after typing in the first two assignments, I can actually click the corner box here, drag it, and it's going to autofill all the way up through assignment 10. Now I wanna place a little title in the first column. So I'm going to select column A and go over to merge options. I want to merge the cell vertically. I will then title my sheet as class 2022 to 2023. Now I want to format it so it's placed on the side and in the center. So I'm going to go over to vertical alignment and click the center option. Okay, so now I like how that looks a lot better. Then I'm going to click this little slanted A for text rotation and you can change the angle that the text is written at. So I want it to go across the top at 90 degrees. So I'm going to select the one that is 90 degrees and then I'm going to align it in the center. So now to make the checklist match the style you want. So if you wanna format your sheet with all of the same font and size, then you can select all by clicking the box right in the upper left corner here, or you can just select individual columns, rows, and cells. So I want it to have the same font across the whole sheet. So I'm going to select all and then select the font and font size. So I'm going to change to font size 12, and then I prefer the font Century Gothic. Now my heading over here, I wanna make a little larger so that it stands out by making the font bold and then increasing the font size. And I just like the look of it being a white font against a black background. So I'm going to make the text white and then fill in the background as black. Now notice up here, some of the assignment headers are getting cut off and I want that text to be rotated a bit so that when I put the check marks in, I can still see the headers, but they also wouldn't be taking up too much space. So I'm going to select C through L and then go to the rotation icon again and then rotate the text. So I like how 60 degrees look, so go ahead and choose whatever rotation you want. And then I'm going to drag the cells to the size I want. So if all of the columns are selected, then when I click and drag the cells, they'll all be the same size. So that looks good. And now I can see all of those assignments very clearly. Now to insert checkboxes, you're going to click insert checkbox. Then click the corner and you can drag it down the cell so it fills in all the checkboxes for the entire column, or you can go across multiple columns to fill in checkboxes. And then when you click, it will automatically fill in the checkbox. Right now we have a simple black and white checklist, 
it's looking good, but I want to add some color. So I really like how in a lot of grade books, they often have different colors, so it's easier to distinguish between each row. So one option to do this is to go up to Format and select Alternating Colors. So this has the classic grade book look. It's easy on the eyes as you input student information, and there's already a lot of colors to choose from, and now each row alternates colors. If you want to create your own look, you can play around with the color palettes. You would just select each column and then change the color that you want. So my tip for having a color palette that you like is to save the hex codes that you prefer and save them either in a Google slide or a Google sheet. Then when you copy and paste them into your sheet, you'll automatically have all of those color options in the custom fill color options. So for example, say you really like the pastel rainbow look, then I would just go to Google and you're going to type in pastel color palette hex codes. And then you're going to notice all of the hex codes. You can fill them into a cell along the bottom, insert them into your sheet, now all of those colors are going to automatically show up in your color options to fill. So I had made a color palette and I have it right down here. So now all of those colors are in my fill options and I can go in and change the colors of the columns, the fonts, the check boxes. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. You can pause this video as you change all of your colors. So I really like using checklists to check off student activity for assignments that I'm not necessarily grading, but just checking for completion or as students turn in assignments. I also like to print these checklists out and have a blank master copy that I keep in my planner, which can be helpful for field trips or if I just need a paper checklist because I don't always have my computer on me. And there you go. So now I have a fun, colorful checklist. I love all of the colors. So now I'm going to show you how to make a drop down menu in your list. So say you're collecting student data where there's three different categories. So for example, I need to keep track of my students language levels. Instead of typing emerging, expanding and bridging for each student because that would take just way too much time. I want to be able to select it through a drop down menu and have it color coded so I can easily be able to see that information as I form groups. So to create a drop down menu option, I'm going to select the cell that I want that menu in and go up to data and select data validation. Now I'm going to select the criteria as list of items. This is where you're going to type the different categories that you have. So now I will type the list of items separated by commas. So I have emerging, expanding, bridging, and then click save. Now I have all the options in the cell and I can select it from the drop down menu. Now, I want to take it a step further so that when I select the item from the drop down, it also color codes it. To do this, you're going to select format and then conditional formatting. Over here, I want it to be a specific color for each of the text options. So I will go under here where it says format rules and select text contains. Then I'll type emerging and select the fill color as yellow. I will add a new rule for each of the items from my criteria. Now, looking back at my data sheet, I'm going to copy the cell and paste the format in the entire column. Now you'll notice this tiny little arrow on each of these cells that have the drop down menu. So now I can easily go in and select the option I want for each student, and that data is much more clearly marked. So this works really well when making student groups or analyzing data. So now that you have your beautiful and color coded checklist, there's additional tips that might make it a little easier as you're inputting your data. When inputting your data, you can freeze a cell. So for example, if I'm inputting information about assignment 10, I can't see my students' names anymore because it's way too far to the right. So I'm going to freeze the columns up to the student name column, and now only columns to the right of it are going to move so I can make sure I'm inputting the correct data to each student. So to do this, go to view, freeze up to column B, now I can scroll through the data tracker and input the information I need while still being able to see student names. The next tip is the wrapping text. So at the beginning of this video, I showed how you can slide the column to make it bigger so that you can see the full name. But another option, if maybe you want all the columns to be the same width, would be to wrap the text instead. So I'm going to make all the columns the same width and then select the student names. 
go over to the wrap text option and now you see the text won't be cut off and it instead continues on to another line within the same cell. So I use wrapping text a lot, especially when putting in the headers for different assignments, like where I put assignment one. Sometimes that text, there's just too much information that I wanna put, so the wrapping text is really helpful. So another tip would be to actually print out your checklist. So I like having a master copy of a blank student checklist at my desk because I do not always have my computer or device near me. And sometimes I just need a paper copy to check off student permission slips or maybe for a substitute. I'm just having that class roster ready to go, but already with those checkboxes can be really helpful. So to do this, I like to print off a black and white copy with blank checkboxes. I click print and then you can select to print it out as a landscape or portrait option. So it will depend on the look of your sheet and how much you have in there. I always keep a blank master copy in my classroom and just make multiple copies that are always come in handy, especially if I have a substitute, I can just pull that roster and leave it for them. So now your checklists are all done. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this video gave you some new tips and tricks when using Google Sheets. If you did find this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for all my newest teacher tips and I'll see you next time. Bye.